I never, ever want you to live in fear. I never want you to live in a way that uh, you're not sure what the person in your life is going to do next or say next. Never want that to happen. I want you to live each day kind of knowing what to expect. And I want that expectation to be good. I want you to enjoy life to the fullest if you can. Sometimes you can't. (laughs) Sometimes you have things that are going on and you just can't enjoy life. But for the most part, I want you to enjoy what you can, when you can. And it's harder when somebody in your life is being very difficult. I talk about difficult and toxic relationships over at loveandabuse.com if you are in a situation like that. But I also do the flip side as well. I help people that are the difficult ones, the ones who maybe are toxic and maybe are emotionally abusive and they want to change over at healedbeing.com. That's a program that I run that uh, has been very, very powerful for a lot of people. But I wanted to share all that just in case you are on one side of that coin or the other. Loveandabuse.com and healedbeing.com. I'm just trying to share what I know to help you Create the best, strongest, most long-lasting relationships possible. Life presents the toughest challenges. Every day you are faced with decisions that test your ability to express who you really want to be in this world. We're told to keep saying affirmations and keep thinking positively, but what do you do when that stuff doesn't work? Welcome to the Overwhelmed Brain, where you'll learn to make decisions that are right for you so that you can create the life you want now. Hello, this is Paul Coliani, and I want to help you learn the skills you need to deal with life's challenges using emotional intelligence and critical thinking without compromising who you are. This show consists of my personal opinions and is meant for informational purposes only. Always seek a professional for your mental health and well-being. Great to have you here, and um, I am going to get right into what we're talking about today, at least one of the subjects. It has to do with um, emails that I, I get on occasion, like hundreds of them. (laughs) I get a lot of emails, not hundreds, but I get a lot. And uh, uh, the emails that are always the ones that warm my heart the most are the ones of personal struggle to uh, overcoming that personal struggle. So someone has gone through a lot of crap or suffering and they write and say, I'm in a better place now. Because some of them, some people will write, maybe you, will write to me and say, I'm going through all this stuff. This person's against me. This person's against me. And this system's against me. Or I can't figure out what to do. Help me. Help me. Give me some advice. And uh, I do my best to try to help. But these um, follow-ups that I get that say, you know, I... Listen to an episode. I, I did what you said. Or even if um, it's not about me, and I'm not making this about me. I'm trying not to. But if, if it's not about me, if it's about I went to therapy, I uh, did something else instead of doing what I usually do. I did something else. Your show helped. Therapy helped. Other people helped. But they write to me and they tell me this. They share it with me. And I'm so grateful that they do that. And I always... I show my girlfriend, I say, look, this person wrote, (laughs) look what they wrote. That's amazing. And sometimes I tear up because some people have really struggled. Some people are truly victims to others or of others. Some people are truly victims of the world, the world, like everything that happens to them is something that was out of their control. It just happened. Like they have the worst luck in history with anyone that anyone that in their lives, they compare themselves to other people and other people have it so good. But this person, uh, it keeps happening. It keeps happening to them. Add the SH at the beginning. It keeps happening to them. And they don't know what to do because they uh, they are struggling and they get, Uh, a little bit ahead. They progress a little bit. 
And then suddenly something happens. And now not only are they sometimes right back at the beginning, but they're even before the beginning. Like they have to crawl out of a deeper hole. And like I said, I get emails like that, that everything happens to this person. I don't know about you, but have you've gone through a period of life where nothing just seems to stop. I mean, nothing ends. <laughs> it's just one thing after another after another, and you're suffering, and it's painful. It could be one person doing this to you. I, I hear about this in relationships all the time. This person is doing this to me. This person is doing this to me again. This person is doing something else to me. My spouse, my partner, my family member, my friend, my ex. These people are doing things to me. And they just won't stop. And my life is already hard. I'm working three jobs. I don't have enough money to survive. I have kids to take care of. I mean, every story under the sun is out there. And these are truly victims of the circumstances they're in, of the people that just won't give them a break, of people that want to crush them. I see this in narcissistic abusive relationships and many toxic relationships. The partner or the ex-partner wants to crush their partner. I don't know where this comes from, the desire. I mean, I do, but the desire to want to crush someone after they break up with you or something, or you break up with them, or whatever. It's like, why would you spend so much energy focused on a person from which is now the past? They broke up with me. I want to crush them. I want to hurt them so bad. How about you just move forward? And I'm probably not talking to you. I'm, I'm talking to someone out there that may have done this to you. Maybe someone out there has done this to other people. I felt this way and I know what happens. It's like our pride, our ego is bruised or we feel like they owe us something or we feel like we've done the best we can for these people and then they harmed us or hurt us in some way and we want to crush them even if they didn't mean to hurt us, even if they just wanted to make a decision to do something else in their life that didn't involve us and we felt left out, we felt neglected. I want to crush them. I mean, that's that's the mentality for some people. And I'm sure I felt this way maybe when I was younger. Oh, I just want them to hurt. I want them to feel the pain. But I didn't actually do anything like that. And there are some people that do things like that. Some people that will want to get back, want to get revenge. And I'm not really here to talk about that today. But I am talking about how there's a lot of um, people out there that experience Bad thing after bad thing. Pain after pain. Suffering after suffering. And I kind of went off on a tangent where there are some people that make our lives intolerable sometimes. We just, we don't know what to do next. We don't want to wake up the next day because we know what we have to face. And I want you to wake up the next day. I want you to wake up with a new thought or a new idea or a new direction or a new perception of life. That's something I was talking about with um, my girlfriend yesterday. I said, you know, I get these emails sometimes or people reach out to me and they say, A happened to me and B happened to me and C happened to me and then D and then E and they go through the whole alphabet twice. And I look at these letters and <laughs> I don't know what to say because there's so much going on in their life. I, I can't even empathize with a lot of people. I mean, I try to empathize with anyone. Every suffering that you might experience, I do my best to empathize. But sometimes life is so hard. Life is just difficult for some people that no one can empathize with them. Not many people can look at someone else's life and say, what? You lost your legs and then you were sued and then you were homeless. And I mean, the list goes on and on. And it's very hard to empathize, but I can certainly sympathize. And I can certainly relate to suffering. I can certainly relate to some of the feelings and the thoughts that you have. But how much resilience is one supposed to have? How much tolerance is one supposed to have? Just to get through another day. 
And so, like I said, I was talking to my girlfriend yesterday and I said, you know, some people have all this stuff that happens to them. And I've realized over the years myself, just the stuff that I've gone through, which is very minor compared to the, the letters that I get. But just some of the stuff that I've gone through when I had nowhere to turn, no one to turn to, or at least I felt that way. I had no support system or structure. I, at least I felt that way. I had nothing that would um, get me out of the hole. When I felt that way in my life, I reached what I call a threshold. It's the breaking point. I'm done. This is it. It's over. I'm, I'm not going to take this anymore. I can't because I want to be happier. I want to live my life. I don't want to have to wake up each day fearing what the uh, what the world's going to do to me or what that person's going to do to me. Just like I said at the beginning of the episode, I was talking about the, uh, the podcast and the program. You don't want to have to wake up wondering if this is going to be another bad day or knowing this is going to be another bad day, but um, you're hoping that it's not as bad as the other days. I, I hate that feeling. I don't know about you. <laughs> I hate that feeling. I don't want to live my life like that. It, it uh, burns my stomach. It's anxiety. It's fear. It's anger sometimes. It's sadness. All of these negative feelings that we can carry around with us from day to day to day, it eats away at us. It's disintegrating from the inside out. I don't want you to have to carry that with you. So I come on the air. I've been doing it for nine years now. I just come on this podcast and try to give you tools so that you don't have to do that. Try to give you especially tools about personal boundaries. I think that's one of the most uh, prominent points I try to make in several ways throughout each episode. You have boundaries. You have personal boundaries that people shouldn't cross, or at least they should know they shouldn't cross those boundaries, or at least they should honor you honoring your boundaries. They should love you enough to be happy that you have boundaries. They should want you to have boundaries, and they should respect those boundaries. So I, I cater to a lot of boundary talk. Is that the right word? <laughs> I talk about boundaries a lot, uh, but in different ways telling someone that uh, they are too close to you. You're in my personal space. It's making me uncomfortable is a boundary. It's a personal boundary. This is my personal space and I feel comfortable when people aren't this close to me. So help me feel comfortable, <laughs> you know, step back a little bit. You know, you don't, you don't have to say it like that, but I would say that. And this is how I would say, it. I would say, um, would you mind taking a step back? It's, it's a little uncomfortable. You're, you're, you're kind of close. And uh, the last person I said that to, in fact, the only person I said that to, because that doesn't really happen to me too often, thankfully, but that's what he did. He took a step back, and everything was cool. It's not always going to be cool, cool but I'm going to honor myself and stand up for myself when it's necessary. This is how I avoid, not always, but this is how I try to avoid carrying that negativity with me, meaning I'm trying to avoid holding on to anger, fear, and sadness, and anything negative that I might feel that disintegrates me from the inside out. I try not to carry that into the next day. I try not to carry it into the next hour or the next minute. I try to resolve it as soon as possible. Not always possible, but that's my goal because I don't want to carry it around with me. I've already been to the doctor, <laughs> meaning I held on to anger for so long, 30 plus years, before I finally figured out that anger was causing all my stomach issues. It, um, it, you know, We have emotions that give us feelings. This is my take on this. We have emotions like anger that we feel in our body. I have an emotion, anger, that I feel in my stomach. And that's not a pleasant feeling. And as long as that feeling is there, that means I haven't resolved what I need to resolve. I'm not turning this into, hey, every physical pain you have has an emotional origin. I'm not saying that at all. That's not true. 
physical pain has other origins. But it also can originate from your emotional state. So if you're carrying around some sort of tightness in your chest, it could be could be that emotional space that you've been in for many years. And I don't go into the physiology of all this stuff and on this show, but it's important to know that, that you might be carrying around something emotionally that can affect you physically. So I ended up going to the doctor for holding on to anger for so long. It was basically toward my stepfather. And um, I didn't know it until one day it came out. But I went to the doctor and I said, I'm just having these stomach issues. And he prescribed something and the stomach issues went away. But then they came back or they started coming back. I thought, oh, crap, (laughs) I need to fix this. I need to heal this. What's going on? And I don't know when the transition was, but I started thinking differently about my physical pain, especially my stomach, my burning stomach. It was like um, acid. It was too much acid. And it was the anger that was creating too much acid in my stomach. That's my analysis. It was the anger that was creating too much acid. And um, when I figured that out, oh, I know how I figured this out. The transition was when I um, finally admitted that I hated my stepfather. That was the transition. That was the moment I discovered that anger was eating away at me. I had to admit it. I had to get to that point of admission where I said, I hate my stepfather so much. And when it came out, when it finally was released, I felt better. It wasn't immediate because I had some residual from the physical stuff that was going on but boy that I mean within a few weeks maybe the burning in my stomach went away and I still had to see a doctor to get that prescription so I don't know it's too much about the timeline there but it was all around the same time go to the doctor I was holding on to anger or was I holding on to anger then I went to the doctor. it doesn't matter because the correlation was discovered I figured it out oh holding on to anger makes me feel bad. That's why self-forgiveness is so damn important. That's why it's important. At least a component of all of this is self-forgiveness so that you can let go of the emotions, which hopefully causes you to feel better because you don't have that emotion lingering inside you anymore. And that hopefully will help you feel better inside. You know, if the cause of any physical pain or suffering is emotional, But when it is and you discover that emotion, you can start to heal. And again, I'm not going into the physiology of it, but I'm I'm sharing something that happened to me. I was able to let go of anger. I was able to let go of hate just by admitting that I hated. And that created a change in my body that was profound. Hey, my breath smells better again. You know, a lot of acid make your breath smell. And uh, it was noticeable. Hey, my stomach stopped burning. I can eat certain things again not every not everything i burned my stomach pretty bad i can't eat like onions and garlic without uh, it affecting me which i love onions and garlic but uh, there's always antacids <laughs> but i am mostly healed from that because i don't hold on to the negativity and that's what this is all about it's letting go of the negativity because when you hold on to it what happens what do you what else are you holding on to It's like holding on to a hot coal, and that coal keeps burning your hand. I better forgive myself because I want to get rid of this stuff. Well, is it all about self-forgiveness? No, it could be about forgiving someone else. I don't really promote that here. I don't think you have to forgive other people if they've done you wrong and done something, they've done something unforgivable. I'm not one to forgive somebody that did something unforgivable, but I am absolutely on board with forgiving myself, and I've talked about this before, but forgiving myself a break for how I showed up then and for not knowing better then, for not having the right tools or resources to make better decisions back then. So I have to forgive myself and forgive myself a break because giving myself a break helps me heal. I'm going to forgive myself. I'm going to Give myself a break for how I showed up back then because I didn't know better. Because there's always, well, I shouldn't say always, but there's often 
so often, I'm going to say 99% of the time, when somebody does you wrong, there's a giant percentage of the time that you are holding on to some sort of uh, regret or self-blame. Like there's a small part of you that's holding on to something where you blame yourself. You're, You're thinking, I should have done this. I could have done that. I should have said this. And if you aren't forgiving of that part of yourself, you might hold on to something negative and carry it with you from day to day. So I woke up this morning and my girlfriend says, let's go for a walk. (laughs) I thought, it's so warm out and I just took a shower and, oh, what do I want to, okay, we should go for a walk. You're right, we need to move every day. We need to get our 10,000 plus steps in, which we never do. And (laughs) she convinced me that we need to go for a walk. So I said, okay, yes, you're right. We need to do it. Let me make my drink. That's not what it sounds like. I had to make my element before we left. My element, L-M-N-T, is a tasty electrolyte drink mix with everything you need and nothing you don't. It contains a science-backed electrolyte ratio, 1,000 milligrams of salt, 200 milligrams of potassium, 60 milligrams of magnesium. It is the perfect ratio with a good balance and no BS. You know how important it is to replenish your electrolytes. It is essential when you're keeping an active lifestyle. I just opened my chocolate powder pack and just poured it into my cold water and drank it before we left, and I felt great. I felt great on our walk. And as you get older, you just got to keep going. You got to take care of yourself. You got to take care of your mind, and you got to take care of your body. So waking up this morning and drinking my Element was exactly what I needed. I enjoyed the drink anyway. I love their flavors. And when we came back, I was ready to record. Here I am right now, recording this right now. So let me share with you how to get Element. They're offering you a free sample pack with any purchase. That's eight single-serving packets free with any Element order. This is a great way to try all eight flavors or share Element with a salty friend. Get yours at drinkelement.com forward slash brain. This deal is only available through this link. So you must go to drink, D-R-I-N-K, Element, L-M-N-T, dot com, forward slash brain and get this they offer a no questions asked refund try it out risk-free today that's just something to be aware of Uh, i'm certainly aware of it if i hold on to negativity it carries over and if it's there the next day and the next day and it's a consistent pattern like it's a constant negativity inside of me and I feel it this is something important like you can be angry but not really feel it and it's hurting you but you can still be angry that's a little different I'm angry and I'm gonna do something about it and this is where I segue into my original point which was sometimes life is against you like the entire planet the entire universe is against you sometimes it's impossible to progress when the entire world is against you or everyone that you know is against you or everything you try fails. I get that. I mean, I understand why people can have some pretty dark thoughts. They get into a a space that there's nothing they can do. Everything they try fails. And sometimes this happens to us. Sometimes it happens to us that uh, we get to the point where we're stuck. We don't know what to do. And we feel like there's just no way out. We are pushed into the corner. Everyone else wins. We lose. We get the it end of the stick. (laughs) You know what I mean? And what do you do now? Well, it's over, I guess. This is the thoughts that can happen. It's over. There's nothing else I can do. I am beaten. I am tired. I am beaten. I have no energy left to fight this anymore. And so my thought, when this happens in my life, thankfully it it hasn't too often, but it has happened. It may have happened to you. It may be happening to you right now. My belief, my thought, my philosophy about when the entire world is against you is to say, then 
F all you all. I'm going to do it myself. I'm not telling you this is a solution. I'm saying that when no one else is around to help you and you're pushed against the wall and you have absolutely no options left, you're going to reach your breaking point. You're going to reach that threshold and you're either going to feel like dying or feel like finally living life on your terms, in your way, because no one else is around to help you. No one is going to step up to the plate and say, you're worthy, you're lovable, I'm here to help. Sometimes that doesn't happen. This is a reality check, unfortunately, and some of us have to go through this. No one's here to help you out, so guess what? You're on your own. That might be exactly what you need to take your power back. It might be exactly what you need to take the next damn step into making something happen, making something good happen in your life for once maybe. It might feel like this is the first time anything good has happened because I'm going to take the reins. I'm going to take charge. I'm going to take my power back because you're not going to help and you're not going to help and this system's not going to help and this job isn't going to help me and that person who promised to help me who never shows up, they're not going to help. So I'm going to take my life back and I'm going to own my life. I'm going to step into Whatever I need to step into might be horse dung, (laughs) but I'm going to step into it because I'm going to take a step forward. I'm going to move. I am sick of being the victim. I'm sick of it. I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm not going to be this victim anymore. And no one's going to stop me. I'm going to take charge of my life. You're not here to help. You're not here to help. I felt that way when um, I was losing the job that I really wanted. And uh, this is a minor example, but I was losing the job that I really wanted, that I really believed that other people were going to help me with to get me into a position that uh, would make me happy. And they failed to do that. That was a, a turning point in my career. They failed to show up for me and say, hey, now that um, you're finished with this contract. I just talked about this recently, but now that you're finished with this contract, why don't you come into this position that we have reserved for you? That's the promise. That was the promise that I got. But what I received was, sorry, uh, just um, keep looking at the job board and we'll see what happens. After those two days of moping, (laughs) after I heard that information, I heard the manager that I trusted was going to help me get into a full-time position there. I decided that no one is here to help me. No one's going to help me get into the position that I want. I have to do it myself. I have to make this happen. Whether that means I have to go to the right people at this company, or maybe it means I have to take charge of my own life because nobody else is going to help me because they have their own life that they're either taking charge of or whatever. doesn't matter. doesn't matter what they're doing. What they're doing doesn't matter because now is my opportunity to shine for myself. I'm not here to impress you, not you listening, but playing the role here. I'm not here to impress you. I'm not here to make you money. I'm not here to uh, do your bidding. I'm going to take charge of my life. (laughs) This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the steps that I need to get what I want in life. Does that mean I'm going to be? a multi-millionaire driving around in a Rolls Royce? Maybe, maybe not. doesn't matter. doesn't matter what the result is. What matters is the next step that I take for myself because what ends up happening is you take that one sometimes big scary step for yourself and you discover that you are able to take that first step, which means you're able to take the next one. I mean, It sounds so simple when I say it that way. You're like, I took the first step, now I can take the second one. It's the same thing that happened to me after my back surgery. I got to, or my when I was married, my wife drove us home, and there was the first step out of four flights, a fourth flight of stairs uh, up to our condo. And I looked at the first step, and I said, I'm never going to be able to do this. There's no way I'm going to be able to climb these flights of stairs. (laughs) 
I can't go up four flights of stairs. I just had back surgery. Or at least I was out after several days in the hospital. And I was finally coming home. And looking at this flight of stairs, the first flight was impossible. Let alone the second, third, and fourth flight. I'm not going to make it. There's just no effing way I'm going to make this flight of stairs, let alone the next three. I can barely move. I'm all drugged up, morphine, or at least it was starting to wear off. Um, and I I didn't know what to do. I just stood there. And then it started to rain. <laughs> and I thought, this is perfect. This is perfect because it's forcing me to take the step. It's forcing me, or life, or the universe, God, is forcing me to take this first step. I have to. My wife waited patiently. She said, whenever you're ready. And it was cold. This was in Oregon. It gets cold and rainy. And I looked at that first step and I said, I told myself, if I don't take this first step, I'm going to get wet. I'm going to be cold. And what am I going to do? Just sleep in the car tonight? And so I decided that I have to do this. I have no choice. I have no choice but to take charge of my life right now. My wife's not going to carry me up. I'm not going to find someone to carry me up four flights of stairs. I'm not going to call the hospital and tell them to bring a gurney. (laughs) It's not going to happen. This is me. This is my choice, my life in this moment. No one else is here to help me, even though I had support, but not physically. I, I had to make it up. I had to make it up the stairs. And so I looked at that first step again, felt the raindrops hitting my head, my shoulders, and my back, cold raindrops. And I said, I have to do this. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And I did. I took the very first step. I lifted myself onto that first step. Man, that was, oh, it was so powerful. I feel it today. It was so powerful. I knew it. I knew if I made that first step, that I could make the second one. And I did. I went to the second step and I lifted myself up. I went to the third step and I lifted myself up. And I repeated that for the first flight and I made it to the first landing. <laughs> I looked down and I don't know if I had tears in my eyes. I, I think about it now and I have tears in my eyes. I'm thinking about how powerful that moment was and how powerful a lesson it was. To look at something that I knew, in my mind, I knew it was impossible. I can't do this. They just opened me up and worked on my back. They just they did some surgery on my back, and there's no way I'm going to do this. I was against impossible odds, and the odds were in my mind. Because I limited myself thinking that I'm not going to do it. I'm, I'm not going to be able to do it. And I was able to overcome my own belief. So I looked at the next flight, and I did the same thing. I stepped onto that first step, and I said, I know if I can make it onto the first step, I can make it onto the next, and the next, and the next. Because the first step was uh, finally proven. I, I, I proved that it was possible. And I made it up that second flight. And repeat, I looked at that third flight. I made it up that third flight. And then the fourth flight, It was all downhill from here, even though it was uphill. (laughs) But I knew it. I knew if I made these three flights, I was going to make the fourth. And I did. I I went up those stairs, fourth flight, and I I, we got into the condo, and I went left into the bedroom, and I think I fell asleep. (laughs) That was it. That was all the energy I had, and I I made it. That was it. That's all I needed to do. I needed to, to get up the stairs, and sometimes... You know, this is kind of one of those motivational episodes. Sometimes you need to look at this as an impossible endeavor that is possible. You need to look at something so crazy challenging and seemingly impossible and say, all I need to do is make it up the first step. That's all. That's all you need to do is make it up the first step. That might mean if you're in an abusive relationship and you want to get out of the relationship, the first step might be just to look up an attorney's name or look up an attorney near you. I'm not saying you should do this. I'm not giving you advice. I'm just saying if you're in a very dangerous situation and that was the first step that you knew was going to be scary as hell, that might be the first step you take. But you did it. You get past that point. It might mean 
you have to uh, sacrifice your fear. You might have to sacrifice your fear. You might have to blow the doors off your damn fear and just do it anyway. Because what else are you going to do? You're not going to stand there in the rain and get cold. You might, but why would you want another crappy thing to happen in your life? Why not just see what happens? Take that step forward. Take that step up and make that whole flight to the first landing like I did. And when you get there, you can say, look, look what I did. (laughs) I, I did it. Wow. That's the kind of messages I love receiving when somebody makes it up the proverbial four flights of stairs after back surgery and looks down or goes to sleep right away because it took all their energy, but they look at their accomplishment. I did it. I I made it. This is it. That's all you need to do. I made it. And if I made that, what else can I accomplish? What else can I do in my life when no one else is around to help me When the world is against me, what can I do? What can I accomplish? And this is how I see life nowadays, is that I know when it looks impossible and no one is there to help me or guide me and it feels like people are even against me, against me succeeding. Not with the uh, back surgery thing, but when it happens in my life, when it happens in your life, you just have to say, then it's up to me. Another phrase, if it's to be, it's up to me. I like that phrase. It's a good one. If it's to be, it's up to me. I'm going to have to do it. Sometimes that's what it takes. Sometimes you have to drive the bus. (laughs) Sometimes you have to take the bull by the horns. Sometimes you have to take the reins of the stagecoach and steer it in the direction that you want. You are the captain of the ship. What other uh, metaphors or analogies can I use? Uh, Sometimes... (laughs) You have to be both people on the seesaw. How about that one? It sounds impossible, doesn't it? But I bet you'll find a way. I bet you'll find a way. If I gave you that as your challenge, you'll find a way. So I hope this is helpful to anyone that might need to hear it. I, I don't want you to wake up every day miserable. I don't want you to wake up and think, What are they going to do or say today? I don't want you to wake up and think, oh, my life is terrible and this is the way it will always be. I also, especially, don't want you to wake up thinking that you don't have the power or the choice to do anything about anything. Sometimes the choices are extremely difficult and sometimes they are, yes, they are impossible. There's always a step we can take in a direction that we can do something about what we're going through. And when it feels like you're at the end of your rope and you're up against the wall, you may not know what to do next. And that's the point where you just reach your breaking point, you get to that threshold and say, that's enough. I've had enough and I'm going to take care of this myself no matter what it takes. And that's another philosophy I live by. I'm going to take care of this no matter what it takes. I learned that similar philosophy in, what was it? I read a book once, and it never said this in the book. But what I got from the book was, you keep moving toward what you want until you're either exhausted or dead. (laughs) It never said that. But that's what I got from it. I just kept reading and thinking, it just sounds like no matter what, keep moving in that direction keep taking steps forward it just seems like that's where it's going with this message never said that but it made me realize if I want to accomplish something anything even something small that I need to take a step in that direction and continue taking steps in that direction until I'm either exhausted or dead and that doesn't mean I'm purposely trying to get to the point where I'm dead. I'm actually purposely trying to get to the point where I'm exhausted. So I do reach a breaking point and I realize, oh, maybe I'm going in the wrong direction. (laughs) It sounds futile. I know. But when you get to that breaking point, maybe I'm going in the wrong direction. You figure out what direction you're supposed to go in. And yes, sometimes you do have to go the wrong way for a long time. Sometimes you do have to go the wrong way for a long time until you realize 
there's nothing else I can do. I'm exhausted and I don't want to die. So my next step has to be in a different direction. That's what you do. And I hope you never have to go through the suffering that uh, some people have written to me about or any type of suffering, of course. I don't want you to go through any of that. But if you are consistently going through some sort of suffering and you feel like the world is against you, I hope that what I talked about today will give you some sort of direction, some sort of hope that there is a way through it and out of it. And sometimes you will move forward and then get pushed back. And this is where you say, I've had enough. I'm going to do this. I'm going to make my life happen the way I want it to be. And I can't rely on anyone else to do it. Sometimes that's what it takes. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for tuning in today. We'll be right back with my thank yous and my goodbyes right after this. Thank you for listening to another episode of The Overwhelmed Brain. I want to thank our patrons this week. Uh, four of them, Michelle, Angel, Crystal, and Chris. Always good to see your names. I recognize all of you. Thank you so much for continuing to support the show. And uh, I love all of you. So thank you, patrons and anyone that supports the show. I appreciate all of you. I am grateful. And if you find value in the show like these patrons did and you want to give back, Head over to moretob.com. And if you like what I'm doing over here, it's helping you out in some way and you're in a position to help, you can do that over at moretob. Anyway, thanks again. And I want to tell you about another show that I do called Love and Abuse. And uh, it's all about giving. I'm trying to give as much as I can. And Love and Abuse is a podcast where I talk about difficult relationships, especially on the toxic side, manipulation, emotional abuse, controlling behaviors, and how to deal with them, how to recognize them, how to deal with them, how to get through them, how to get through these difficult relationships. So head over to loveandabuse.com if you're interested in that. And if you just happen to be the difficult one, then I can help you if you want to change. I hope you do. I hope if you're a difficult person and you know it, at least in relationships toward your loved ones, and you want to make a change, head over to healedbeing.com. I have a robust, very effective, very powerful, very life-changing program over there that will help you. First four lessons are free. Check it out, healedbeing.com. And finally, thanks to Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com for some of the music transitions in the overwhelmed brain. I'm going to read you a couple things that I received just to kind of ease us out of the show and see where we go with these. This is um, one person who wrote to me recently. She wrote, Mr. Coliani. You certainly don't have to call me Mr. Coliani, but thank you for the respect. I'm not sure. I'm, I don't know if I am worthy of a mister. Maybe I am. I don't know. But thank you so much for writing that. She said, Mr. Coliani, I'm sending this email to express gratitude for what you offer through the Overwhelmed Brain podcast. I have been randomly picking episodes and hit one that unlocked a very timely aha moment for me. Thank you for this. I've been struggling to feel successful in my work for the last few years, and I'll be resigning next week. I now know that my touchstone slash beacon slash signal is also the sensation of trudging through mud that you shared. I've not been honoring it. I most certainly will now, going forward, that I'm tuned into it. I plan to responsibly and respectfully release myself from this job, process the grief of letting go of a job that I once loved, then look for new opportunities where success can be achieved with challenging work. Your podcast episode has helped me feel less angsty, is that a word, angsty, <laughs> and distraught about this change and more like I am adjusting course to get back on a path of progress. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Sincerely, Jay. I'm not going to read your name. You didn't give me permission to. But I am so grateful for you writing this. Jay, thank you so much for your words. And I am so happy for you. I'm very proud of you that you're taking this step. It's a scary step and it's a risk. It's a huge risk. And you are taking a step into at least the way I look at it, you're taking a step into yourself. It's like we can look at this externally, like I'm taking a step 
into a, a new career or I'm going to try something else and uh, hope that works. But I don't look at it that way. I look at it as I am moving forward by aligning with who I am inside of me. And that's how I read your email, Jay. I am so proud of you. I don't know if you need to hear that or I don't mean to sound patronizing, but I am. I'm proud of you. I'm so glad that you're doing something for yourself. And I say it is a risk because I can't just tell you, hey, you know, if you don't like your job, quit and go do something else because, you know, people have bills. <laughs> we have bills. We have to take care of our family. We have to take care of our mortgage, our rent and our car payments. And uh, you might not be able to do that if you quit. There's the risk, right? There's the risk. And I've decided in my life that I am sick of being limited by the risk. I don't like to be limited by the possibility that something won't work. I like to feel unlimited. I like to feel like there are more choices than I've given myself most of my life. She's given herself more choices, even though it's a risk and she may not get the job that she wants right away or may not have the money that she wants right away. But I tell you what, she's not going to have something she doesn't want anymore. She's going to move past that, move beyond it. And in my personal philosophy, her doing this is going to open the door for something even greater. Who knows? Maybe she'll quit and suddenly she'll be in a job that she doesn't like. But I guarantee you, she'll know that she has the ability to continue forward, continue another direction. If that doesn't work, you change course, you pivot as you need to do it. And that's a very difficult advice to follow sometimes because sometimes you believe that everything depends on that one thing. And uh, it's possible that she definitely relies on this, but I think she has faith in herself that she's going to be able to make something happen. She's going to make something happen. I have faith. <laughs> I have faith in you, Jay. I'm, I know you're going to make this happen. I know it. Because you set your mind to it. This is what I was talking about earlier. When you set your mind to something, this sounds so motivational. I'm not the motivational coach, but sometimes I come on here and I am. Uh, <laughs> you set your mind to it and you exhaust yourself until it works or you have proven that it doesn't, you're going to make something happen. That's just how I've lived my life. I mean, at least the last 15 years or so. I'm going to set my mind to it and exhaust myself until it happens. I hope I don't exhaust myself. I hope it happens sooner than later, but I'm going to do it, damn it. That's who I am. I'm going to just put myself out there at risk and do it. Now, the good news about this is that when you take some of these risks in life and things work out and things don't work out, you learn what works, you learn what doesn't, and then you start Getting into a position where you don't need to take as many risks anymore, if any. Well, there are a few here and there, but the big ones. Like we avoid the big risks, so we stay in situations that we may not want to stay in because we don't want to take that risk. But I've noticed, I've been able to prove this in my life time and time again, when I take these big risks and I move into something better, something different that always becomes better because I'm always pivoting course and changing direction until I find what I like and do what I like and feel good about it, then you don't have to take the risks anymore because you're in a better place. It's like being in a bad relationship or a bad job and then you decide to take the risk and get out of it or change it in some way, ask for a raise, ask to go to couples therapy, you know, depending on what you're looking at here, relationship, job, anything. And when you get into that place in your mind, you're making that change, you're changing course, then something will change. And when something changes, you either improve it or you prove that it's not going to work. And so when you take that big step, that big risk, if it doesn't work, yeah, that's the risk, right? You lose it. You might lose the relationship. You might lose the job. You might not have that person in your life anymore. That's the risk. 
but what are you leaving behind and what are you moving toward? And I'm not trying to promote one way or the other. I'm not saying that, hey, you should leave a person that's bad for you because it's your life. (laughs) You do what you want. You figure out what you want in your life. But I do promote, I do endorse, I do highly encourage you to keep people in your life that are supportive, maybe loving, respectful, and remember these guidelines, remember your boundaries, so that when they are crossed, that you know that something needs to change and you make those changes or uh, let people know that if they don't make those changes, something is going to give and then you move into a better space in yourself because you're honoring yourself and the more you honor yourself, and this is what I was talking about earlier, the more you step into yourself, the more you progress inside yourself and what that does is strengthen or rebuild your foundation of who you are. This is who you are. This is who I'm showing up as in the world. I'm going to strengthen that. I'm going to increase its um, power. I'm going to empower myself. And I do that by stepping into myself, getting into alignment with what I want in my life and what I feel and what I value and who I love and where I want to be. And what I want to do. And you get into alignment with all these things, or at least take a step toward getting into that alignment. Then you start noticing these changes in your life, good changes, and sometimes painful changes. It can be painful. Change isn't always wonderful. In fact, uh, you've probably heard change is painful. (laughs) Change can be, oh, change can be painful. Change can be suffering. And sometimes we suffer to get to a better place. So I am so grateful that Jay wrote this and shared this with me. And I shared this with you because this is what it takes sometimes to get out of a situation that isn't working for you anymore. It does take risk. It does take a a scary step into a direction that may look like um, something you've never seen before and something you've never experienced before, which feels like, a big void or abyss. That's how I explained uh, my mom trying to get out of her relationship with my stepfather. She'd never experienced her life alone without this guy in her life, or at least 40 years. She didn't experience life without him. All she knew was life with him for the last 40 years. So getting out of that relationship without any experience of what life is like at the age she's at now or at least she was then, stepping into that abyss because she has no clue what's on the other side. Stepping into that abyss is the risk. It's the risk we sometimes take to make our lives better. And I don't want you to get comfortable being uncomfortable. You might have to, but I don't want you to. I mean, that's just my personal selfish thing for you. I don't want you to be uncomfortable and be comfortable feeling that way, like you get used to it. Don't uh, accommodate the uncomfortableness because the more you do, the more you tolerate it and the more you're, you're resilient to it and the more you allow this toxic um, feeling inside of you. Remember that anger I used to hold on to? That anger ate away at me. It disintegrated me from the inside out. That's why it's best to let go of the negativity. And sometimes if you can't let it go, if you can't heal from it, if you've forgiven them, if you've forgiven yourself, if you've prayed, if you've done everything trying to get past the anger, sometimes you have to get past the situational stuff, the circumstantial stuff. Sometimes you have to get out of a situation. Sometimes you have to change your circumstances so that your life changes. Because yes, you can heal and still be in the toxic environment. You can heal. You can feel good inside yourself. It's like um, when you leave home, when you grow up and you leave home and you're on your own and you have some toxic family members or just not very supportive, not very loving in some ways. Maybe you have those family members, a couple, one, two, hopefully not, but if you do, what happens is when you go back home after being out of that environment for a while and being on a 
journey, a personal growth journey, uh, an emotional evolution, so that when you get out of that situation, you start learning things on your own. You start learning that the world isn't as um, awful as they paint it to be, or you see it differently than they do. You're more positive, you're more optimistic, or whatever. You just have a different outlook on life, and you're a different person than they've painted you to be your whole life. So when you get out of that environment and then you come back, I'm going on vacation, I'm going to see my family. Oh, great. They're treating me the same way they used to treat me, which means they think I'm the same person, but I've changed. I'm home and I've changed. How do I show this new person to them when they keep pulling me back to this old person they think I am? And to show up as the new person, that's scary. That's a risk. Because you know it, or you believe it might cause conflict, it might cause resistance. So this is where you might have to take a step into yourself and stand up for yourself, honor your boundaries. You might, or you might say it's not worth it. It's not worth talking to these people as if they're going to treat me any differently. It's not worth it, so I'm just going to try to keep my mouth shut and try to get through this next week. (laughs) So I hope they... Don't um, push my buttons too hard. But I hope you do get into a position, if you're not already there, I hope you're in a position where you can look at somebody who used to treat you a certain way and you didn't like it, and you're ready to say, you know, that's disrespectful. Could you please stop doing that? And then they'll listen. Will they listen? I don't know, but that's the goal. Your goal is to say it as if they'll listen. Say it like you mean it. And... That's the risk. That's the risk of evolving. That's the risk of improving your life and your relationships. That's the risk of being yourself. Thank you, Jay, for writing. And thank you for listening to this episode of The Overwhelmed Brain. I'm so glad you joined me. Let me just remind you to keep an open mind because that's how you step into your power so that you can create the life you want. Always take steps to grow and evolve. You are powerful beyond measure. And above all, and this is something I absolutely know to be true about you, you are amazing. <laughs>